podcast where two bearded film fans watch the best and worst horror movies of all time. My name is Luke Condover K, and I'm joined by my regular co host, a hey, Mr. It's Mr. Ben Arrington. And a brand new sort of co host, sort of dude, man. How's it going, Mr. <laughs> John Crennan? It's going well. Thank you yeah. guys for having me. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, we, well, we've, um, we've known each other for a little while now, um, and we know that you enjoy a, a horror movie every now and again. I am partial. You are partial. Uh, and then I think Ben was just saying before we started recording that he's been spying on you or something. I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> <laughs> quite I've been spying on you, John, through <laughs> the curtains. <laughs> he's been Instagram stalking me, yeah. That's yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. More so than usual as well, you know, with, this, with, with October and all of his horror prompts. I did too, guys, too. <laughs> like in every photo. More than once, sometimes. Double liking. Yeah. I appreciate those likes. I need them. Yeah, and he's and Ben spotted that I had posted about this movie, yeah. and then asked me if I wanted to come on, and I said yes, of course. Yeah, on a bloody <laughs> podcast, mate. Come on, just wheel you in. Come on, another yeah. one. Yeah. So, so, John, maybe just a, like a little bit of a background about yourself. Are you have you seen a horror movie before? Are you? Uh, <laughs> I have. I have seen one or two. I have seen oh. one or two. <laughs> got a bloody expert on the show Jeez. i'm not sure i'm going to be up to your standard of expertise but we'll see we'll I don't see know, man there's, there's tons of stuff that you told me about over the years um so maybe let's give a quick rundown so what, what's have you got a favorite horror movie or a least favorite or anything yeah my well my all-time favorite movie uh is jaws which a lot mm. of people consider some people don't really consider that a horror movie but i think it is so if yeah. people don't accept jaws as an answer i, I then I go for my second which is the exorcist those are my two like all-time favorite movies and they're quite different from one another but i just think they're perfect films yeah uh so i'm definitely more of a kind of classic horror guy uh a lot of the times uh i introduce myself as a horror fan you know when you're out talking to folk about horror movies and they'll often say have you seen x y and z and it's generally the latest thing yeah in the cinema and i have almost never seen them so it's classic horror is kind of more my thing Th- okay. this is pair cool oh yeah because yeah. so it is be right up your street then oh um, yeah well i think we've got to consider jules a horror film we've done that yeah. on this podcast and oh, yeah. uh you know for many people it was the it was a very very a, a film that could have made everybody scared about going in the water any water can't even put my hands in the sink uh, <laughs> he, hasn't had, he hasn't had a bath for years. <laughs> I haven't had a bath for 30 years, mate. Yeah, wet wipes. Yeah, uh, they're bad. For, they're bad for the environment. Uh, just a flannel. Just, a, the <laughs> just, just a flannel. Oh, they're terrible. They're terrible really? for the environment. Yeah, don't flush them, Luke. For God's sake. Why are they bad for the environment? What do they do? Is it the chemicals? They're just like, like they're, the... they're very pl- they're plasticky. They don't they buy they don't buy a degrade. Oh, okay. Let's okay. let's start a new podcast just about the horrors of the environment, <laughs> yeah. things that are the horrors for the environment. Yeah, I think That'd the, thing be with, interesting. the thing with Jaws is that it it kind of doesn't feel like a horror movie for the first maybe hour or so because it's the music isn't quite horror music. It's got more of an adventure film sort of theme to it, feel to it, and then it sort of just gets increasingly horrific. And then there's the the famous scene with uh, when what's his face gets eaten. It's like, oh, this is a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, it's like a buddy movie almost. You just yeah. want to be part of the crew, and it's all in Technicolor, and it looks beautiful. Yeah, it's a stunning movie. It's absolutely yeah. perfect. There are yeah. some really, really yeah, good, good, <laughs> genuine scares in that film, though. Are there? Yeah. Some yeah. really genuine. Ah! Oh yeah, some yeah. absolute classics. The Ben Gardner's boat when uh, you know he's diving under the boat and the, the face appears under the water when he's getting the tooth out. It's a, it's one of the all time classic uh, jump scares, I think. Yeah, yeah. I also really like that uh, Dolly zoom. You know the so where uh, yeah. Shida looks into the beach, there's something in the water. Like you don't get you don't get good Dolly zooms anymore, but that's uh, that's pretty special. Oh, it's, it's a, a classic shot. Zoom. Yeah. So uh, news then we found out who our co host is. His name is John. Yeah. So Hello. The next section of the show is the news, Ben. <laughs> the bloody news, isn't it? The bloody news. Uh, so, a couple of bits. Um, so, James Wan's new horror film has been announced as being called Malignant. Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of all we've got about it. <laughs> I was hoping we'd get some plot details, but apparently everything's under wraps. It's officially his 10th feature, which, you know, for a director of like our disease, like probably. He's got a young face, hasn't he? He's got a young face, yeah. He's probably early 40s, but that's a lot of 
features to have under your belt and considering like he's a name director you know you see his name and you kind of know what to expect now is this a um, conjuring verse film or do we not know that either i don't know so is we've got the cast and it's no one from the conjuring verse oh actually yeah. it's ingrid 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 bisu is that no, no no i thought that was maybe the actress who played the nun but i'm mistaken mm-hmm. uh yeah so that could be interesting We've got, I've got literally nothing else. I'm sorry, guys. There's uh, literally there's a little bit of news in there somewhere if you really dig for it. There um, was um, there was another bit of news, wasn't Sam Raimi uh, got announced that he's returning to horror this week, didn't he? That was just a few days ago. He is coming back to do a he's horror making, film. Uh, is, is he directing it? You mean? Yeah. Right, right, that, well, that's what yeah. I yeah. actually. Oh, yeah. So I don't Sam want to Raimi... jump in. I could be wrong, but I, you know, I heard another that Sam Raimi is directing a horror set. movie. I'm hopeful now. <laughs> yeah. So, jump right. in. so, <laughs> yeah. ex- so just two days ago, Sam Raimi is going to dive back into the world of horror, agreeing to direct and produce uh, entry or uh, entry horror anthology series Fifty States of Fright. So you know he'll still be he'll still be directing something. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's, it's going to be a feature, but who knows what that could open up? You know. Um, yeah. There we go. Okay. Another bit of news I saw is that Doom 64, gaming news, horror horror gaming news, I guess, Doom 64 has been delayed, but is now a pre-order bonus for Doom Eternal, which comes out on PS4, which I think is like next March. Is it going to be free? So, I think I saw some... some yeah, so it looks free. like it's going to be free. So we've got we've got like an announcement trailer that's this, um, dropped. So obviously it's just Doom 64, but I guess reskinned to look nice and shiny for yeah. PS4 and PC and Xbox One, which is quite exciting. Um, I'm quite excited for Doom Eternal though because Doom, the the um, the recent reboot, well, the recent new game was insanely good. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was played... really fun. Yeah. You, have you played that, John? Have you? I, what was the last one? I played Doom th- Doom Three on like the uh, Xbox. Doom that was 3, the yeah. last one I played. There's a there's yeah. a newer one uh, that came out man, five years ago or something now, and it's um it sort of captures the sort of intense feel that is was kind of missing from the franchise for a long time and this new the newer doom game is a lot of fun it's it's just it's insane it's brutal it's fun it's kind of campy but it's it pure pure carnage it's so ridiculous yeah. and, and the it's soundtrack just like... is um it's spot it's like a really heavy doom metal sort of soundtrack it's just um, like tech metal yeah. just dialed up to just 11 it's just it's just insane yeah it's a great soundtrack yeah and it kind of just it keeps you on the edge of your seat throughout like as soon as the music kicks in you're a bit like oh god what's gonna happen yeah pretty difficult as well so yeah yeah that's cool doom 3 was good though doom 3 was i quite liked it i think it got critically not panned but it wasn't particularly successful but i thought it was good it was pretty creepy i liked it i liked it but yeah that More was a long time ago action. you know what game yeah, should be um uh rebooted is time splitters 2 i would love to play time splitters 2 again it's such a good yeah. such a good game what about time splitters 1 don't remember that one <laughs> don't remember that one at all oh jesus yeah um um i've got something else i've got a physical item to go with the uh the news of the um, john carpenter wrote a joker comic oh, with yeah. blurry yeah wow. um so i hunted that down this week just because i wanted to see it feel it Smell it. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty cool that, that John Carpenter is writing out. It's really blurry. That this blurry thing's not not working very well, is it? I'll put it right in front of my face. Uh, <laughs> so obviously a great time for this to be released for him because obviously Joker is probably as popular as he's ever been since Heath Ledger with the new movie. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's like a one shot. I don't know if there's going to be a follow up. I guess they were sort of wait and see how popular it would be. Um, it's another Joker story, which is like through the eyes of another character. So like another yeah, yeah. minor, brand new, introduced character. So like a henchman of Joker, which they did with the Joker standalone um, comic. Uh, Brian Az- Azzarello, is yeah, that his name? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's pretty good. As I said, it's only it's only a single issue, so it's got there's quite a lot crammed into it. Uh, but it's pretty brutal. I wouldn't necessarily say it's, it's particularly John Carpenter. There's nothing I sort of read in there where I was like, that's very John can't, Carpenter. Can't hear the music. You need that music. That soundtrack. You can't hear the music. No, exactly. Yeah. You need. If you're listening to a soundtrack, all the way through, it'll be good. But the art's really good. Um, so yeah, I recommend picking it up. Whether you pick it up, you know, physical mm. or a digital copy or something, just to check it out. Especially you know, if you're a fan of John Carpenter, because it's quite a unique thing for him to have done. I don't think he's ventured into the world of comics before. 
Yeah, he it, has. He has that... done a few comics. Um, because he has his own. Right. Okay. Uh, it's called like Storm King or something. The Jesus. His, Sandy King. His uh, what's her name? I can't remember her name. Sandy Carpenter. She um has a publishing company, like a small press comic book publishing company, and they put out like tales of sci-fi and tales of Halloween and some bits and pieces. And I think John Carpenter does write a few bits oh, and okay. bobs. Okay, so he's done. Those. So he's done it before. It's yeah, weird that that's not yeah. more sort of in in the in the public eye because I've not really yeah. come across that ever that he's ever done that. Has, are there any like comics of his properties as well? No, I think it's all kind of like new IP. But it, I think it is small press. Like it's um, it's not done through like a DC or a Boom or anyone like that. It's uh, so there's something called grown. Tales for a ha- Tales for a Halloween Night, which he's done before as well. Yeah, I think that's yeah. There's, there's like a, there's an ongoing one as well he did. Which is like about like LA and some demons in LA and stuff. It looks cool. I've, I've not read any of it, but uh, yeah. Cool. That's it. That's it from me. Okay. Short and sweet. Cool. Anyone else got anything they've seen this week? Anything we've seen? Stuff and guff. Uh, we'll yeah, do man. stuff and guff. We'll go straight into that. Well, so I'll, I'll tell you what. I um, gave up on Marianne. You know the Netflix thing, um, because oh. it was it was good. Have you seen Have you seen any of Marianne, John? Have not. Haven't okay. seen it. It's on my list. So, but it might not be anymore. <laughs> no, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's good. I mean, it's um, it's got some cheesy moments, but the 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 scares, like the actual sort of build around the scares around this older woman who plays Marianne the Witch, are really well done and really, uh, just super creepy. But then, uh, the thing that's possessed this old woman leaves the body and goes to another body, and then that whole thing about how creepy she is as an actress. Is just kind of washed away, and it's like that. It loses pretty much all of the scariness completely, and just becomes a kind of a kind of deflates. So I, I kind of like lost interest. So um, I mean, maybe it gets better, but I'll never know now. <laughs> um. <laughs> it may, it might get better, but you know, I'll never ever know. I'll never give it a chance. <laughs> it's I'm going to have to how many with. how yeah. many episodes is it? Luke? I think it's like eight or something. But I mean, like, I'd rather just stick on like a I'll horror rather. movie, a movie or something. Eight. Eight hours, like eight hour long episodes, are they chunky? Yeah, they're, they're like hour long episodes. Yeah, yeah, I think that's no matter how long the series is, when they're hour an hour long, like set, settling down to watch that can be a bit of a chore if you're not hundred yeah. percent invested or enjoying it. So yeah, it was on my list as well. Um, but yeah, maybe I won't give it a shot then. Who knows? What, I mean, what, like the, like the, my first, favorite um, the first three episodes are pretty fantastic. Like they've got some cheesy elements to them, but the the scary bits are genuinely kind of scary. Okay. What episode number did you decide to switch off on? Well, I think I mentally switched off at episode four, and then okay. switched off physically like episode six. Oh, that's quite close to the end. So. Switched off physically. How yeah, but, I, but had it been taken in the end of episode six? I don't know because I, I just wasn't paying attention. It's a <laughs> like, bold statement. It's quite well, a bold from, statement from a bold to man. quit at six. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. I, I make sense all the time. <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys get this though. Like when you start watching a TV show, you've got like this compulsion to just like you need to finish it, no matter how much you hate it. It's almost you, like you need to sometimes. throw a line under it as you've watched the whole series at least. I can I can not go back to another series. Like if I hated series one, I need to kind of watch it all. Really, no, it takes I, it really I, takes something for me. I'm, I'm either one episode or one series type of guy. If that makes sense. I do oh, quit off at that yeah, point. Yeah. 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 No, I do quit uh, seasons sometimes, but I always feel like I'm missing out on something. Like I stopped watching American Gods in, in the middle of season two yeah, because it changed quite a lot. I loved the first season, and then season two was just really not going in the same direction. But, I lost uh, you know, Brian Fuller, I think, the showrunner, right? Yeah, and Gillian Anderson left with him, I think, and yeah. It, yeah, it just didn't have the same... I don't know. Maybe it got better towards the end, I'm not sure. Pizazz. But now I feel like... I'm missing out because I know there's going to be more and I'm not going to go back to it. So I, I tend to agree with Ben a little bit that I, I do try and stick it out because I've just got that fear that there's something great around the next corner. Yeah, yeah but, but it you could be like finish in a it. film or something. Like you could be wasting those hours away watching like watching season two of Daredevil and you're thinking, I shouldn't be watching that. <laughs> like this, is, this isn't as good as it was. <laughs> like, I think I mean, I think it was the Netflix, uh, the Marvel Netflix stuff, when I started to go the other way, when I was like, I should not feel like I need to plow through, because I haven't enjoyed 
30 hours of my life because of these seasons <laughs> like these seasons it's just not not fun I managed but, to avoid that somehow I, I didn't watch like any of the Marvel stuff I watched Jessica Jones and that was that was kind the, of the it the first season of Daredevil and Jessica Jones are pretty good but then... oh wait, I saw that as well I saw Daredevil but I didn't see yeah. Luke Cage didn't see uh, who's the other guy Iron Fist yeah Punisher and it should Punisher I didn't watch any of Punisher and I heard it was great yeah, yeah I haven't I watched it either see. When they all came together as well, like as the defenders, that should have been like unbelievably cool. But for some yeah. reason, I was like, eh, yeah, eh, eh. <laughs> uh, but I, you, I did watch, and uh, that I think you, I don't know, I because I've seen so much hate and slack for this film, and I really liked it. It was Wounds, which is, um, so have you seen it? It's uh, on Netflix, just dropped on Netflix. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the director's name, it's got Army Hammer as a guy who works behind the bar. Um, and there's a big scrap in this bar. It's in New Orleans as well. It's got like a Nola flavor to it. And um, there's a big scrap in this bar. Someone gets glass in the face, and they sort of leave the bar, and they, they leave this phone. And Army Hammer takes it, manages to unlock it by seeing the smudges on the screen. So he, and he he sees like photos in the phone of like. Well, I don't want to spoil it because it's only just out, but um, like creepy stuff, like and it's it's got some great yeah, no. co- cosmic. <laughs> got some great cosmic horror vibes um, I think people don't like it because they were like it's too weird, it doesn't have a sort of um, it's not a conventional horror story in any way there's Deco- Dakota Johnson as well right? yeah, um, yeah. and I thought and she was Zay's, pretty good in Zazie Beats? Zazie Beats? Zazie? Zazie Beats? Joker? yeah, yeah, her yeah, um, yeah. but it's, it's, it's cool it's um, really unnerving I, I've kind of realised that the people who seem to have gotten really into it are the people who like weird horror like the sort of the more Lovecraftian side of things and people who don't like it are the people who um, kind of I guess wanted more uh, more jump scares and, and sort of ghouls and stuff I don't know I mean maybe, maybe that's just me being a bit of a snob but so know. we're looking at we're looking at a 4.1 on IMDB at the moment I mean I know it's not a be all and end all yeah but... that's what I mean it's getting like one stars all, all across the world on Letterboxd and I, and I watched it and I thought that was pretty great and then I went on Letterboxd and I was like how have people <laughs> hating this that much it's not bad it's a good film and it's got some cool uh monster stuff in it it's got some cool lore there's like some really cool gross uh body horror stuff going on in it it's awesome it's a great little film i don't understand the hate i think i gave it like um either three and a half stars or three but even now i'm thinking back i'd probably give it more of a four worth sounds worth good a go, then would you say would you say worth a go yeah out of yeah. this then what was the other recent netflix one that came out. Um, no, the tall grass. Yeah, uh, this one's better than the tall grass. I thought, but in the tall grass is all right. Uh, yeah. But we, we we talked about in the tall grass last week, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you see that? Did you see that, John? Yeah, I'm afraid it wasn't for me. Oh, you did. I did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't like it. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. We, we, I even read. We were the same. We were the same. Yeah. I, I just wanted wanted it to be so much more. There was cool moments, but it mm. didn't hang together for me. As soon as the, uh, like, and this is not a spoiler because it happens in the first few minutes of the film, but as soon as the, the pregnant woman walked into the glass, uh, the grass already calling the in police, the I was just, oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was just yeah, like, hold that on, nuts. what? That seems yeah. a bit weird. <laughs> that was uh, nuts. And I was kind of checked out from there. Yeah. Hello, hello. Excuse me. Yes, yeah, so there's somebody in the grass. <laughs> like, what, what, what's Get going on in people's head? <laughs> Luke, you actually did visit the tall grass as well, right? There's loads of tall grass where I live, uh, and I went in the tall grass, and then I died. <laughs> you get lost. Was it Velociraptors? The problem with they the tall grass and that, is like it's uh, it's way. Like, you know, you see like films where people are running through tall grass away from like serial killers and stuff. Like it's no way. Like it's just it's just so thick, and you sort of you can jump into it and like push it down. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, like yeah. you can't run through it. Not like that. Not like the way <laughs> people are zipping through it. It's the same. <laughs> with, like, right. It's the same with like when you get look at like thick woods, like genuine woods. If people are running through woods in the dark, I was walking my dog through the, the uh, through the woods the other night, and I <laughs> tripped over about four times, and I've got like a, like a torch. It's it's like it's it's impossible. There's no way people are running from serial killers. And then, like, when you watch it and you see, like, and then you see, like, uh, it's happened many times. And then you see, like, uh, a woman uh, running away from a serial killer and they trip. And everyone's like, oh, God. As if you trip then. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you you would. (laughs) Uh, Luke, speaking from experience, 
Yeah, debunking horror tropes here on Horror yeah. Hangout. You can't run yeah. through the bloody grass, mate. You're on your ass immediately. <laughs> just you, just on your back, just rolling through it. Yeah. Yeah. But Good other time. than that, other than that, I don't know. I just uh, saw uh, tonight's today's film that we're going to talk about. So um, mm. I saw. I didn't watch it all that much this week, you know. Um, I saw the first episode of Watchmen last night, the series, HBO series, um, which is very, very different, you know. To to there's a lot of in, interesting ideas that have been introduced that I'm I want to see where they go with it. Um, doesn't seem to. I think it, it does exist in the same universe as the film. It definitely exists in the same universe as the comic. But it's hard to say, because well, they're very similar, obviously, the comic and, and the film. Oh, but okay, yeah. So, I mean, what ending are they going with? From exactly. There? So, I don't, I, at this moment, I'm not 100% sure. There are hints to some things, hints to <laughs> other things. But it does seem yeah. to introduce some really interesting themes and a spin on, like, the way the masks were in the 80s to how they are now in modern day. Um, yeah. It seems pretty cool. It seems like it's in, in, like involving, like, modern day modern day issues like in in the way they sort of deal with these things so it seems pretty cool so far um it's got a score by trent reznor and atticus ross oh, cool. which is brooding um very nice i feel like <laughs> <laughs> um i don't think that's released until november though i believe because i wanted to get hold of it after i watched the watch the show but yeah so it's so cool like so stylized you know like how the snyder film was stylized with this sort of massive sort of yellow text especially like in the titles and sort of various other things that come yeah. through like that, and it was almost like it was stylized in such a way that. And now, now I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound like it's a bit predictable, but I really liked it. Is that you can almost see like these stylistic choices before they happen. You're like, I, I can imagine this happening now. It's because you're so used to like the, the the stylistic choices of of the graphic novel and the film oh, okay. in the way the yeah. in the way the smiley face arrives, in the way like the little drop of blood on various different things. Yeah, they're very good at doing that, so it feels very much part of that graphic novel in the film That's so cool. yeah i've only seen what only seen one episode but i like it so far um very cool um and the only other thing i saw so i saw the zombie land sequel um uh, yes double tap are you guys fans of the original why well, i am but i can't remember yeah i am <laughs> it's a long time ago yeah i, I like i like the first one i didn't yeah. expect a sequel i don't really know where they're gonna go with it but no. uh, i haven't seen it so yet. I liked the first one, but I thought I'd rewatch the first one as well, and I I laughed a few times. You know, even though I've seen it probably five or six times, I laughed a few times. And it is it is a good film, and it's good. They're good characters, and obviously the zombie stuff is very much sort of like in the background. It's kind of just there, and you know, it serves a purpose, but it's not. Despite the film being called Zombie Land, it's not the be all and end all. Mm. But Double Tap was great. I really liked it. It was. I didn't obviously. It's not ten years later. You kind of feel like, do I want a sequel? Do I really care about these characters and what happens next? And turns out, yeah, I do. Uh, it was, it's got some really good sort of uh, pretty good jokes. Um, the story's pretty great. Some good cameos. Uh, a lot of fan service for the original as well. Like if a, if you're a big fan of that, so yeah, I recommend it. I, I after seeing the trailer, I was a bit like, I'm probably going to skip out on it. Yeah. I was a bit like, mm, I don't so much like the look of that. But then the reviews started coming in, and most of them were positive. Hmm. So I thought, I'll give it a go. And uh, pleasantly surprised, I'd say. I'd say it's pretty pretty on a par with the original there's a couple of guys in the office who um maybe like maybe about four or five years younger than me and they when they talk about zombie land they talk about that as if that was their big that was their Shaun of the dead sort of thing okay. that was like a big movie to them so they they're like really excited to go and see it so i think it'll do well i guess if it's yeah. just more of the same then yeah. the first one was good enough for me to yeah that's worth the ticket price alone it yeah. pretty much is more of the same, yeah. It's more of the same, and there's not they don't do anything like kind of ridiculous to make you go, oh, this doesn't really feel like the same universe, or, and they explain things in pretty interesting ways, you know, because obviously ten years later coming, it kind of doesn't make a whole world of sense, especially like in an apocalypse scenario. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. good. Cool. It's good. I liked it. What about you, John? What did you What did you watch this past week? Because you've been doing the Thirty One Horror Movie Challenge in October. How are you getting on with that? <laughs> Yeah, I've been trying to watch a day, a new horror movie to me a day, and uh, it's proven really, really difficult. The last one I watched was Happy Death Day to You, okay. which I liked. I liked a lot. Um, have you guys seen the, seen the sequel and the first one? one? I've seen the first one. It's good. Okay, I've not seen either of them, but again, they're kind of on 
on my list of films I know I need to watch. Yeah, yeah I really I really like the first one. It's a, it's a fun, inventive slasher. It's yeah. it's really good. Uh, I was expecting kind of the same as Zombieland 2, more of the same, and it's actually not really more of the same. It kind of goes more uh, where the first movie was a slasher. Uh, this one's kind of more like a. It's still got the horror slasher elements, but it's more sci-fi in a weird way, and it tries to explain what's happening because it's no spoiler to say that really the first movie is is Groundhog Day meets a slasher movie. That's what it is. The fun is Groundhog Day meets Scream. It had the sort of the meta yeah. slasher sort of thing to it. Yeah. So the second one tries to go into like the universe and why that's happening, and it's fun. It's it's good. I really enjoyed it. Not a not an instant classic, but it's again it's absolutely worth the the ticket price or the rental price i i really liked it uh, other than that i've had a couple of forgettable uh movies unfortunately on my 31 day challenge the last one before that that i really liked was mayhem did you guys that's the joe lynch film. yes yeah in the office block and oh, i yeah. loved that it's that's cool. a very stylized oh, what's oh, sorry, look... from a uh, ready or not um Samara uh, okay. Weaving, okay. yeah, that her yeah. name. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've not, I've not seen this, but it, I've heard, I've heard good things about this. Yeah, it's really good. It's on Shudder, and it's absolutely worth a watch. Uh, I'm just checking. The only other thing was a, a Japanese found footage movie called Occult. Have you guys heard of this? Oh, wait, what's it called? O- o- occult. Uh, yeah, as in occult or occult. Uh, o- o- occult. Okay. Occult. Yeah, sorry, the okay. Scottish accent. No, I've, def- I've definitely, <laughs> no, I've, I've definitely seen the poster, but I've not seen that now. It's a difficult one to recommend because it gets pretty weird, um, and I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to think how do I describe what happens. Basically, it's about um, this tourist attraction somewhere in Japan. It's a bridge. And it starts with a very, very shaky found footage cam of like a tourist video. They're walking across the bridge and someone starts attacking people. And it's uh, the film is about the director of the actual film kind of puts himself into the movie and he's making a documentary about this fictional uh, uh, attack on the bridge. And that's where it starts. And then it goes way off the rails into crazy town. One cut of the um, Cool. Uh, anything, anything else from your, your Halloween horror uh, nights that you kind of want to give a shout out to? I think that's pretty much the the favourite so far. Yeah. Is there anything else you're gonna you're gonna watch before? The, no, before I'm. The over? I'm kind of. Um, I don't really have a list. I'm just yeah. working through movies as I see them or as they're recommended to me. So if there's any unusual ones that. It's difficult because they've got to be new to me. What first watches for me, so you, and you don't know obviously what I've seen, but uh, just ones that are coming up in conversation or ones that I'm seeing, I, I kind of just chuck them onto the list quickly. I don't know what my next one is. I haven't picked. Well, I'd recommend checking out that wounds because I'd be interested to get your oh, yeah. opinion on it as well. Um, because I want to know if I'm just completely wrong about it, which I might be, but I don't know. Yeah, I'll. Uh... I might give that a go as well, you know, Luke. You may hate it. Yeah. It seems you may everyone... hate it. You may hate it. <laughs> you may hate it. Yeah. But uh, other than that, so I watched um, a little something called Invasion of the Body Snatchers. 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 Um, Snatchers. Yeah. So, uh, Ben, you got some information about it? We watched the same one, right? The 1978 version. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, it was Good. the 1978 version. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> How many versions are there of this film? 28? 16? There's four. There's four. Oh, right. There you go. Right. So there's, <laughs> yeah. uh, we watched the one from 1978. So Invasion of Body Snatchers is a 1978 American science fiction horror film directed by Philip, uh, Philip Kaufman, uh, starring Donald Sutherland, Brooke Adams, Veronica Cartwright, Jeff Goldblum, and Leonard Nimoy. Uh, so it was released uh, in 1978, remake of the 1956 Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which is based on the novel The Body Snatchers by Jack Finney. Um, when seeds drift to earth from space, mysterious pods begin to grow and invade a small town, replicating the residents one body at a time. Cool. Uh, so Rotten Tomatoes is pretty favourable. It says, employing gritty camera work and evocative sound effects, Invasion of Body Snatchers is a powerful remake that expands upon themes and ideas only lightly explored 
in the original. 91%. User score is a little lower, 81%. IMDb is right in the 7.4 region. Um, and it's... Um, I mean, I've not, I'd not seen this one before. I'd seen the 90s... Is it Abel Ferrara? I've seen the 90s version when I was quite young. And that one really creeped me out. And I didn't really realise at the time, but I think that was one of the things that really made me love horror. Because I didn't know what I was watching. And it's it kind of... It was creepy and weird, and it kind of just sowed some seeds that, some pods, you could say. That have, uh... So that one's called the nineties one, just called Body Snatchers, right? Yeah, I think so. I think there's another one uh, with Daniel Craig. Oh, uh, uh, is it Daniel Craig? Is that, is that is that an official uh, an official, official remake, or is it like sorry, is it kind of like a loose remake? That's what I thought. Isn't I it called I like? I don't know. Uh, there's one called The Invasion. It's got Nicole Kidman in it as well. Is that the one with yeah, Daniel? Yeah, it must be. I think that's yeah. the one. Yeah, and then there's the one in the school with Elijah Wood. Oh uh, yeah, faculty. <laughs> faculty. Um, again, again, <laughs> these are sort of like very loose, loose ad- adaptations, right, of a similar sort of idea. So there were loads of these, weren't there? Like around about this time, fifties horror movies getting remade. I mean, when you think about it, it's only like twenty years later. So obviously, you've got the the thing, um, the fly. Well, body snatches. Anything that's began with the them body <laughs> body snatchers invasion of two body snatchers. Yeah, I mean it's uh, the Yorkshire version. Have you seen the original? Anyone? I, I actually no. haven't. No, no. This, to be fair, this this version is the only one I've seen because I remember seeing it like years and years ago and being pretty freaked out by a few bits because there are a few bits which are ooh, oh oh are a bit creepy, aren't they? Um, yeah. but yeah, I never saw. I, I didn't even know the night as one existed. Um, and again, I've seen the faculty, but I didn't know that was. It's not. It's not an adaptation. That was being a dick. It's not. I mean, it's not an adaptation at all. Just being a dick, Luke, mate. Always <laughs> being a dick. Stop being a dick for five minutes. Take this podcast seriously. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, so what's your initial thoughts on rewatching it then? After you, John. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So I, um, I've seen this movie actually quite a few times, and I watched it. Fairly recently, I watched it probably at the start of the year because um, it's one of the ones that I uh, I sit and rewatch. I I have a, a very very small collection of physical like Blu-ray discs or DVDs. I don't have many, and this is one of the films that that is in that um, very small collection. So it does come out quite a few times. I watched it uh, when I was young. It was one of the ones that I have this nostalgic love for. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, when. Ben asked me to come on the show. I got another chance to watch it yesterday. So, um, yeah, I don't want to give anything away, but I'm quite a, quite a fan of this movie. You could say you, you're a pod person. And indeed, I am. Swapped out for a person who loves this film. It's, it's cool. It's, You've uh... been swapped out. <laughs> I was surprised, like going back to it, like how much it, like how much the thing, like obviously that came out what four year, four years later. Yeah. Uh, sorry, not the yeah the thing. Sorry, yeah. What it must have taken from this film because there are so many like there are so like, similar themes and it's, it's just, it is very similar in they places. They pair up which quite nicely when they together to watch them as a double bill. Um, yeah, because it's not the, the body horror stuff as well that I I wasn't quite expecting there to be as wacky stuff in this film. <laughs> it's a really wacky moment, but it's good. It's like it's genuinely unnerving. Um, even if there's like a little banjo lady playing <laughs> as a little thing runs out. But it's oh cool. Jesus Christ! I mean, <laughs> we, we will we will we will get to that moment, but yeah. I didn't remember that moment from from years ago. Yeah. But I I rewound that and watched it about four times <laughs> because I was literally like, like what? <laughs> yeah. It's just the music. The music at that moment is like, is you, am, I, am I supposed to be laughing? Am I supposed to be? I mean, the reaction of one of the characters at that particular moment yeah. is exactly how I would react, no matter what the stakes were. If I was presented with this particular thing. I would have screamed, <laughs> like, yeah. without a doubt. Like, yeah. if you scream, you're 100 percent dead. That yeah. turns out. Ah! It's. Uh, we, we'll, we'll talk about it a little, later on. I guess. I'm just. I wonder if the music is. Is it diegetic? Is it coming out of the thing's mouth? I don't know. Uh, because <laughs> well, earlier, like, earlier, a, earlier, it's like playing that. Like, it yeah, it's turned into a banjo. Uh, but uh, okay, so I mean, this felt the the music. I've got to say that the soundtrack. I feel like that sound effect, that whoa, 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 I can't make the noise, but uh, whatever that is, uh, has been used many, many times, sampled from this, because it really kind of feels iconic, even though I've not seen this film before. Um, and also, I really enjoy this 70s cinema verite style of filmmaking, where it looks almost like a documentary, 
You know, when it's sort of the camera sort of moving right into people's faces as they're trying to like look over the camera. Get out of the fucking way! <laughs> and it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Just, it makes it feel like weirdly intimate and weirdly real. Like it's there's the bits where like uh, uh, Donald Sutherland and and uh, uh, Brooke Adams are flirting, uh, flirting one off. They're like, uh, it feels kind of intimate, and kind of real. Um, and did you feel like Donald Sutherland was actually flirting with you? And you're like, what? Often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are some yeah. great. Like like seventies hairstyles and costumes are really like yeah looking good oh, yeah. in this film. Um, I Leonard forgot Jeff Nimoy Goldblum's well. one. Yeah, I, uh, Leonard yeah. Nimoy with like some weird, what's that weird thing? He's got like a weird thing on his hand, like a yeah a leather. Oh, yeah. He I was I, like I read that. Is that, isn't that the kind of thing people use when they're doing archery? Oh, I, was, I, was, I read and um, they never explain it, which is great. So in the yeah. movie, I was going to do this trivia, but I, not now. Uh, there's a the reason he's he's wearing that is because his friend was wearing it or something, and he said, "I'm going to wear it because it will make my character different." Like it's just a weird affectation of the of the character. There's no re- they had or reason terrible for arthritis it. in their hand. Oh, so he's think- like, "That thing you've got there, I'm going to wear it. I'm going to make us. <laughs> I'm going to make something. I'm going to wear it. it. Was for my arthritis. Give it air." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Jeff Goldblum's great. Uh, Donald Sutherland um, is very physical. There's lots of, I don't know. He's uh, he's almost like a scarecrow that's come to life sometimes. Like a, <laughs> sort of blowing, he's a very ganky blowing man. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's but he's kind of charming as well. Um, he, I, what I like about him in this in this film is that he punches things before thinking about anything. <laughs> he just goes like, "What's that bag?" <laughs> All right, back. He yeah. punches like an old woman at one point. Obviously not. Oh woman, yeah, left. I left yeah, quite yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a classic. Like <laughs> it's a great moment. Yeah, he's just like yeah. a really natural actor, which I think you don't really get in leading men anymore. Everyone's kind of looks a little bit like a a model or something nowadays uh, in new films. And Donald Sutherland is is not that. He's just like a regular. He seems like a regular guy that just is particularly good at acting. He doesn't yeah. look. Uh, uncomfortable in front of the camera. He's an incredibly natural performance in 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 all of his movies that he does. Weirdly, Kept he looks thing- more Hollywood now. Now he's a bit older. Yeah, he looks way more like Hollywood. Uh, but he, yeah, he looks so fed. He looks so fed up in this film now. Like just he's like he's tired of everyone's shit. He's just literally. No. Oh, for God's sake! Like, there's a couple of bits where like people are arguing and screaming, and he's kind of like he's taking kinda... his jacket off and hanging up and going like. Oh, he's tired sake. of him because Jeff Goldblum keeps slamming his hand on tables. What's his name? Leonard, <laughs> Leonard Nemo keeps saying it's something to do with your relationship. I'm sure, and the, yeah. this, and what's the name keeps shaking her eyes around like a lunatic. It's just look at yeah. me straight. Donald Sutherland, <laughs> Donald Sutherland is like I've got a split in a day. I just I can't be asked of all his body snatching stuff. I'm yeah. over it. Yeah. yeah. And Veronica Cartwright just cries like she's a great on-screen crier. So while yeah, everyone else is yeah. doing that, she's crying. Yeah. This was this was after <laughs> Alien, wasn't it? It was after. I well, Alien was seventy nine, right? So it, they must have been getting shot. Oh, seventy nine, really yeah, close together. Yeah, Alien really sort of changed the game in terms of um, uh, production design, like aesthetic design. Because even this film feels a feels kind of seventies, but then it seems like after Alien, sci fi seems to level up in terms of like looks and. Where is and... it? It's San Francisco set, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. It's a cool setting. I, I liked it. Um, yeah, okay, so we've got Donald Sutherland plays, um, what is he? So, oh, he's a food inspector. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's like a health inspector, health inspector dude, right? Like the, hey, this burger's shit. Uh, too salty. No, what, <laughs> too salty. There's a lot of rat shit in this salt. <laughs> yeah, basically, he's got a nose for rat turds, as we find out pretty early, early on. He's like, there's a bloody rat yeah. turd. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brooke Adams plays, um, <clears throat> like they're kind of, the loving well, I don't know because she's sort of a main character as well, really for for majority of it. She's um, a botanist, if I if that term is correct, and if it's if I'm using it correctly, a botanist. Yeah. Is that right? Just loves plants and shit. Yeah, right? she does. Yeah, yeah. green yeah. finger. She has an interest in botany. I'm not sure if it's ever. I had just yeah. assumed actually that she was in the the food health thing as well, but maybe she's no, not. Yeah, no, I think you must. Yeah, you must because they're in the same lab, right? So just an interest. She got an interest in botanist. In she's botanist, a hobbyist. Botany. Yeah, but a, she just works. She just works in HMV. There's a nice spot. Um, and then Leonard Nimoy <laughs> plays um, Doctor David Kibner, who's a psychologist. Sort of, um, he's got books out, and he's sort of famous, and he has uh, 
and people sort of like know him and they say oh my wife loves your books you helped her out you know because she's a bit <laughs> um, <laughs> always like that, that one uh, but then uh, we've got Jeff Goblin I'm not too sure what he is he's a poet right yeah well, he doesn't he, know it. he wants he's to read his poetry that's it yeah he's just a bad tempered man isn't he and I think as soon as he's introduced so he's his wife Nancy as soon as she's introduced I didn't even realise they were they were like um, husband and wife for ages and yeah. so one of them went this is my bloody wife. I, went, what? <laughs> I thought she just worked in like the mud bath place, and he just yeah. <laughs> just happened to. But yeah, there we yeah. go. They are in a mud bath. Spa. Yeah. By the way, mud bath. I mean, um, is that look, does that look nice? I mean, it's still grim. It looks, <laughs> it looks like, like the... poo. Like, it looks very much like poo. <laughs> well, even the shot. I mean, and we'll get to it when we get to that point in the in the movie. But even the shot of Jeff Goldblum walking into the the spa. It just looks so dingy yeah. and horrible. I would not want. <laughs> and those someone towels. Gets out, someone gets yeah. out of the mud bath immediately, and she immediately puts a towel on him. I just think that's just you get that's just washing it. Oh, you gonna? You immediately put that straight in the wash. Surely you got to spray them down first, and then put a towel yeah. on them. Don't just go. Yeah, when my dog again, she's coming to this again. When she's covered in mud, you wash her down first, and then put the towel on. You don't get the towel right on her. Okay, Nancy, uh, we've spent most of most of our uh, uh, most of our income this this month on just all <laughs> washing all these uh, towels. It, say, it says here, um, Art Hindle as Doctor Jeffrey Howell. Who's that? Oh, that <laughs> that's uh, Brooke. Ad- <laughs> that's Brooke Adams' husband. boyfriend or Bo- husband. Oh yeah, yeah boyfriend. Boy- that's boyfriend. it. Husband. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and then Leela Goldoni as Catherine Henley. Uh, Oh, who knows? Um, we'll find out. Um, okay, so the plot: we start off with uh, a nice shot of space, or Mars, or a moon, or Jupiter, <laughs> and there's like some, uh, <laughs> and there's like some space cobwebs, or jellyfish, or silk, <laughs> <laughs> or living silk, and it sort of floats through space. It says on the solar winds. Uh, but I don't know if there is any so like there's no such thing as wind in space, is there? I don't think something would. I think once you get the momentum going, it, it will continue at that velocity. I don't think it can blow in space, but it does because it's <laughs> that because it's uh, a film, and uh, it sort of floats across the uh, space, um, and it lands sort of on Earth. And there's some really great special effects where there's like uh, on the leaves these little jellyfish things land, and they kind of like spread their tendrils into the leaves. I don't know how they did that. Um, and then from the plants, uh, trees and that they grow these little pods that um, it's kind of like uh, olives, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> olives with flower heads. This is the best. This is probably <laughs> the best description of it ever. What film did you watch last night? Oh, there was these bloody like silky, silky tendrils, and they're on the on the on the olives, and the solar winds turned up. I mean, and they go, "Are you all right, Luke? Do you need to be?" You just stop smoking the old crack. Yeah. So then, uh, uh, I think we start straight away with Doctor Food Inspector, uh, Mister Donald Sutherland, who sniffs up some trouble. Yeah. <laughs> well, El- Elizabeth picks one of those olives first. Before that, she's the first uh, scene that we see because there's a she sniffs a, real... well. a lot of sniffing in she... this film. There is a lot of sniffing in it. But she finds one on a bush and picks one, and then there's a really, really unusual cameo in this movie right at the start. Robert Duvall is on a swing dressed as a priest, yeah. and he never appears again. <laughs> this is and the, it shows, no, it shows like, his, it's his POV of like go, yeah. swinging back and forth, but I'm like, that's not the POV you have when you're on a swing. You focus on what you want to look at, and you keep looking at it. But he's going, oh! <laughs> Why is Robert Duvall dressed as a... That's it's so weird. That, that, that's the first time I thought of that since I saw it. Uh, <laughs> I never, I never thought, never again did I think, "Where's Robert Duvall, the priest? Is he going to turn up at the end and save the day?" <laughs> that's On the sign swing. of a master filmmaker at work. The fact yeah. that Philip Kaufman made you forget that Robert Duvall is just randomly a priest oh, at the start of this right. movie. Jeez, I don't but feel yeah. like I'm watching. I wonder it's if so he's in weird. the film anywhere else, just in the background. Swing. Uh, yeah, that was the only reason I had to. I had to. In interject, look, is because we can't miss the fact that Robert Duvall was there. But then we oh, go yeah, to, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's not listed. The here restaurant. In the, he's not listed in the cast, which is which is just a disgrace. It's a little cameo or something. Yeah. 
Elizabeth Driscoll is her name. She sniffs up uh, olive on the tree, and she's like, "That's a weird olive. Plants olives shouldn't grow on trees; they grow on bushes." <laughs> so she's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my um, knowledge of botany to to look into this." Meanwhile, across San Francisco, a certain fuzzy-haired uh, sort of elf man <laughs> called <laughs> with a mustache. <laughs> A fawn. He looks like he looks like yeah. um, what's that fawn from um, Pan? A uh, lion which in a wardrobe. Uh, Mr. Tumnus. He looks like Mr. <laughs> Tumnus. <laughs> yeah. It's really strange that the main character. I don't know who the main character is in the in in the nineteen fifty eight version, but it's weird weird that the main character is like a health inspector dude. Like. Well, he should, he should he should like know when something's not when something's not right. Do you know what I mean? He can seems to snap. just go. Is it is it a rat turd? <laughs> no, not interesting. All right, <laughs> is it a rat turd? Yes. Flicks into uh, this, is my, <laughs> this is my my scene. He's and trying he's... to get people to eat rat turds as well. Yeah, well, so he uh, so he goes to this uh, hotel, uh, or whatever, a big restaurant, and they're, they're cooking up, cooking up a storm, and he just pluck. He looks in this um, in this like big vat of of soup, and he plucks this like thing out with some tweets, special tweezers. He plucks out this tiny little thing and he goes, rat turd. <laughs> and then he like, <laughs> caper. And by caper, did he mean like a, is that like a pepper? Like a peppercorn or something? I don't know. I don't like know what a caper little, is. Like, it's like, yeah, there is such a thing as a caper and I guess it looks quite similar. Okay. To, well, he's yeah. like, if it's a caper, eat it. And the guy is like, I would just eat it. I mean, what's, I mean, it's been, it's been cooked for <laughs> I'd, I'd eat it to get him off my back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then Donald Sutherland goes, "Waste not, want not." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he actually plays that. He plays that every time he goes into any restaurant, rat turd or caper. Yeah. He normally doesn't even <laughs> have to use his tweezers. He just sniffs, and the rat turds sort of fly up from plates towards his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, um, so, uh, so he takes the rat, the caper slash rat turd, with him to his science lab museum, uh, with. Um, Elizabeth Driscoll's there. She's got the little plant, um, and then I, I think um, we get the initial transformation pretty quickly, right? With, the, with her husband, she's like he's been acting weird anyway, but he's really gone off the rocker now. He, he's like watching sport on TV with with oh, headphones yeah. on. Like yeah. he just really don't want her to be involved. Can I watch? Can I watch? No, fuck off, Jesus. Yeah, concentrate. So he's got a bit of a personality, I guess, to start with. I think then they have a bit of a laugh. <laughs> I can't remember. And then the next day he wakes up and he's uh, he's basically fuming. He's just cold, <laughs> distant, emo- he's cold, distant, emotionless. Yeah. Um, he's just being a bit of an ass. Yeah. Um, then I guess she goes to work and then she tells him that he's been a bit off. And we we get we get into the hint right away that Donald Sutherland and her are kind of they like each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. So he's probably thinking absolute result that her boyfriend suddenly out of nowhere started being cold and distant and weird. He's like, God, that's really bad, isn't it? Yes. Um, oh, that's terrible. I can't believe it. I'll give you as much advice as you. Yes, bloody get it. Yeah. Um, but then she, she's like, uh, I don't I don't know how she, he, she just jumped to this quite quickly. He's not my husband. He She like feels his back. He's like, whoa, that's not his back. Yeah, she says later on uh, when she's in the bookstore, which kind of explains that because she sort of hugs him from behind and sees yeah. the back of his neck, and she says something about a scar disappearing. Oh, okay. So you, even, you don't get told... even that. If I saw, if I was hugging my fiance from the back, it's like something was missing. I'd be like, "Where's that fucking gone?" <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be like, it's like thinking that she's a different person. Like... You've been replaced. <laughs> Isn't that like? Uh... That's quite. That's quite not. I was going to say common. It's not common, obviously. There's oh, there's some form of dis, some form of disorder where like you become convinced that you, like a loved one or somebody you know has been replaced by an imposter. Um, that's interesting. I think I mean, it might be a mental health issue, but yeah. you're like convinced that you know. Don't watch films like this if you've ever ever had any fault like that. <laughs> yeah. Bloody pod people! There's all the pod people everywhere. <laughs> um, okay, so. Uh, she's complaining to uh, Donald Sutherland about her husband, and he's like, "Well, look, it, it's very unlikely that he's a pod person. It's very rare that it happens." <laughs> and he says, "But if you go and talk to my mate David Kibner, he's written a book on is your husband a pod person or not? <laughs> <laughs> the pod pa- person test." Um, <laughs> and so I think they, they get to the book thing straight away. 
feels like yeah, it's they flying, say, it feels very early. Well, well, while they're driving, while they're driving there, there's a crazy guy, isn't there? Yeah. And there's people running after him, or something. I can't remember. Well, he kind of turns up, bangs on, bangs on the car window, uh, okay. and he yeah. says something like, "They're all gonna bloody coming. die!" God. <laughs> yeah. What was that, sir? Yeah. Yeah. He, so, he shouts like, "They're coming! They're coming!" And yeah. then he runs off, uh, chased by a mob. He goes, "Oh yeah, they, yeah. they did come." Yeah, no, he, here. <laughs> and, you did, and you two didn't help me. Right. Yeah, so yeah. he gets like killed off screen, but then they drive past and see his, see his body. You know, he's been. He's been really good. I mean, they, even they're not trying to murder people, are they? The the pod people. They're just trying they're to trying to assimilate. What's the word? Want to join the party? They just want to get involved. They just want everyone to just be the same, don't they? They want everyone to join their massive, great, big. If they've got like they a like a hive. Ooh, hive mind. That's we're going to say the same gonna time. Say, Lou. We're going to say the same <laughs> We've time. got a hive mind. We're going to say, is that a hive mind? We've got a hive mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of the podcast. It's not a hive mind, is it? I'm, 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 I guess they just all communicate in, in some way. Not yeah, because they entity. can, later on, they can pretend to be pod people and no one notices. So I, I don't think it's a hive mind. Oh yeah, yeah, because they would have sniffed it out. I mean, if they had, if they were the way around, Donald Sutherland would be able to sniff them out. They're, oh, uh, yeah. he's not normal. <laughs> Is this a pod, pod person or a rat turd or a keeper? <laughs> okay, it's, it's all free. <laughs> but there's a really annoying bit that happens just before that that guy dies um, when uh, Donald Sutherland is telling a joke, which he never finishes ever, and you never hear the punchline off. Do you not rem- oh, Does that joke. not? Yeah, so it's remember. like yeah. there's an army in somewhere and they've got a pony who keeps. They've got a pony who keeps yeah. shitting, but they've got. They haven't got enough food. They've got low on food, but they've got a lot of shit or something. I think the punchline is something to do with they've got, they've got loads of shit and he's going to eat that or something. Luke's stand up comedy <laughs> t- <laughs> career has just taken off. Someone's going to listen to this and go, <laughs> oh. Get him on Michael McIntyre. Get him, <laughs> get, get him on Michael McIntyre. Get him on Live at the Apollo. Just, right, there's a joke yeah. about a bloody... <laughs> so, so it stands on a meat and shit or something. I don't know. <laughs> eating shit or something. Work that one out. Yeah, um, Donald Summer's always about people eating shit. Uh, okay, so they go to the... It's like a book launch party. Is this right? Is This This feels like I'm um, skipping a few things. There are a there's a few party. things that I do think we have skipped over, but I guess we can fill it fill it in later. But there just there there are lots of little scenes because mm. we have the whole um, moment where uh, Elizabeth uh, Elizabeth's boyfriend, obviously, I think we mentioned that he he kind of clearly becomes the pod person. Uh, we see uh, people running through the streets. Elizabeth tells uh, Donald Sutherland that her boyfriend's acting weird, and then they have like a little kind of date moment. Uh, they, she goes round to his house, yeah. and they have quite a sweet little scene where he sort of uh, says, "I love it when you well, shake your eyes with me, baby." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just before that, he says, "Like, oh, don't worry about it too much. My my friend Kibner will be able to tell you if your husband's having an affair, uh, got a social disease, or uh, it has become a re- Republican or something yeah. like that." It's like the weirdest. Uh, the weirdest bedside manner for someone who thinks that something's going wrong with their partner ever. Yeah, it's um, all like it's like character building and sort of lots of like building up those relationships and setting them up to later. Yeah, it's quite off. a sweet little it's quite a sweet little moment. Um, yeah, yeah. And then and then there's the laundromat as well, which is quite a cool bit where he goes in with his coffee stained shirt. And oh, the guy yeah, yeah. Says that's not my wife. That's not my wife. And you know that has a lovely yeah, payoff yeah, yeah. later on. And that mm. yeah, I think that great. all happens before the book launch. But then I, I think that's it. I think that's book launch. Next. Before the before the book launch, do we also see the bit where um, Elizabeth sort of see, follows her husband and sees that he's having these strange meetings with people? Um, he's meeting up with yeah, like a random yeah. group of people, yeah. and they're all sort of walking towards various random destinations and talking quietly. And yeah, yeah, it's a bit weird. Like they're planning a weird orgy or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the book party um, it's going all right as book parties go. Uh, David Kibner is um, he's a life of the party. People sign, he's signing his book or whatever. He's going look at my hand thing. 
Look at it. She What's like, that all wow. about? Intellectual. Everyone's going, whoa, man. And he's <laughs> yeah. going, yeah. I don't even know what it does. <laughs> <laughs> it helps me read. Uh, so he, um, he, uh, Jeff Goblin's there. I think he's trying to, he's trying to do a poem or something. He's a bit upset because Dave Kivner won't listen to him, or Dave, he's jealous of Dave Kivner's uh, success and hand glove thing. And um... let me do a poem. Let me do a poem <laughs> at your book launch. Well, no, sorry, it's my book launch. You fucking twat. <laughs> he just, <laughs> he just yeah. hates him. Um, he's jealous of his hand. He's jealous of his, jealous of his hand holster. That's yeah, what it is. Hand holster. <laughs> Uh, so then, um, so there's a woman there who's like, "That's not my husband." And we're getting like a recurring theme starts to build up a bit more now. There's more like people who are saying, "He's not my husband." But Dave Kibner's like, "This is just uh, an emotion. Like you're trying to separate yourself from him, and you're inventing this thing in your mind." Dave Kibner, I think he's the most annoying man in this film. Just constantly saying, he's like constantly playing the um, uh, the psychiatry card, uh, he's con- and he's constantly playing the like cynical. And the like, well, every well, the, 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 <laughs> where all of the evidence points towards the fact that yes, there is an invasion of these body snatchy creatures. He's like, well, it might be someone else. It might, <laughs> it might, it might be, it might be someone else. Yeah, well, no, it's got... definitely this. We've seen the double be created. <laughs> He's like, probably see... someone else. I think you're psychologically making these tendrils come out into my hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he um... gets, and when he when he finally gets body snatched, he goes. All oh, right, there we go. Yeah, yeah. bloody hell, prove wrong. I think I'm inventing this in my mind to stop <laughs> yeah. me. From... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, so uh, he he gets these people to hug, and he essentially dooms that woman. Uh, but I mean, they're all doomed anyway, aren't they? Really, uh, dooms that woman. He makes the makes her hug hug the pod husband, um, and then uh, oh, it's, it's all the mud the mud hut stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. They go out, they go outside with um, with Elizabeth and and uh, Donald Southern ca- character Matthew, and they have a little kind of therapy session outside. When uh, Donald Sutherland sends Jeff Goldblum away, he's just like, just just, me a, just leave us alone. Favor. This yeah. one, this one time, <laughs> do me a favor, go away. <laughs> yeah, which he does immediately. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, then we go to the and then Goldblum goes when he leaves, he goes to the mud the mud hut. Bath, yeah. please. So the mud bath, as you said already, it's uh, kind of gross. There's a fat man who gets out with his dingle hanging out. It's all muddy, um, <laughs> and the, the towel dry that off, and then the rest of him dingle. <laughs> and then, dingle. <laughs> and then they um, they're all sleeping sleeping off. Um, and then what's her name goes to f- uh, check on him because she's like his his dingle was very muddy. Better check on him. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And, and he's, un- he's under, he's under, under like a towel, and she goes, "You'll bloody suffocate underneath there." Yeah, and she pulls it back to reveal. Um, so I'm a bit confused. So this is his original body, and the once the thing has sort of cloned you, it sort of uh, decomposes you or something. Is that like what's happening? Yeah. There? Okay, and that's right. So his body's part way through the decomposition process, I think. So it's sort of got like the white tendrils. Um, it looks. Oh, you... So you think that Goldblum is already a pod? No, no I don't no. think Goldblum's a pod person no, yet at this no. point. Um, the other guy, the um, ah, okay, the guy. Who's, uh, okay, gets okay. Out of thing. Do you know what I mean? It's weird though because, like, I was a bit confused by this it, because because then it becomes really... Goldblum. It's got like the nosebleed and the eyes. It like links to him. So I ca- kind of always assumed it was him. Oh, okay. I, it's, it's like it's like is. when I'm you pretty, fall asleep. When you fall asleep. Like your consciousness is taken by that, and it replicates. It's weird because it's not really body snatching, is it? It's like replicating you. Yeah, backup, like a data backup. Just making a backup. Yeah, right? it's just safe. Just making a backup, like body snatching. I thought, like you know, it body infects backup. you or something, and yeah. you become like the host for whatever that thing is. But it's not really. It's like, it's a much yeah. more complicated way of doing it. I just think these these gelatinous alien things need to go back to the drawing board. <laughs> We've got to come up with an easier way of doing this. Wait, so just to make... So that thing on the bed was the thing trying to become Jeff Goblin. Is that what it was? Well, I think so. And I could be wrong as well because it does... Um, it can be a little bit confusing. But I thought that that was like a pod. I originally started as a flower pod. I guess it's... I don't know how it happened in such a, a brief period of time. But it was... Uh, it was sort of absorbing some Goldblum essence, 
and becoming him. I think you're right. Which is why it bled. Jeff Goldblum has bled. got like some flour on his face. Yeah, <laughs> and that's like what happens when they start to get. Yeah, taken. that's the classic first sign of being body snatched is having a flowery I've face. Bacon, honestly. Uh, and then, <laughs> um, so yeah, so the thing is bleeding from the from the from the eyes or the nose or whatever it is, um, and then. What's name calls the police? I think, or is that around? No, it's not yet, is it? Um... Uh, he, oh, what happens? Because yeah, because Ma- uh, Matthew, which is uh, Don Sutherland's character, realizes that Elizabeth is in trouble. Mm. Um, he kind of comes to a bit of a there's a bit of a leap of faith, I think, there. Um, but obviously, he sees it and thinks that it 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 resembles Goldblum or something, and people are talking about people being replaced, and that's not my wife. So I think he puts two and two together and thinks that Elizabeth is in trouble. So he tries to get hold of her, hmm. but then Goldblum uh, is obviously got his flowery face. He's a bit tired. He decides to lie down, and there's a great moment where uh, Veronica Cartwright is over looking at the body. Goldblum's closed his eyes. It opens its eyes. She screams, wakes up Goldblum, and then there's that lovely moment when the eyes close immediately when Goldblum become ah, uh, is conscious again. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's awesome. almost like it's 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 becoming him, but it's also taking his consciousness before. Yeah. And are we ma- are we made to believe that when the when it replicates you that that your that the original body then decomposes in the same way that the original one had sort of been created. yeah because you see it later you see it with um elizabeth name? later yeah. yeah when he like we're well, not to not to jump ahead but yeah yeah okay but so uh donald Sutherland goes to rescue elizabeth he sneak he breaks into the house um and then he sees it making a version of her and then he steals her body away what uh, is that area that is making the version of her and it's like a weird little indoor garden sort of thing in it um, indoor yeah. garden thing yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> What's that, mate? It is a bit. There's like a I clone. Mean, you, Ben's kinda, like, What's that? What's the garden. You've kind of got. Apartment. You've got. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't seem. Again, I think these aliens haven't, haven't got it all right because yeah. it feels like a lot. A lot needs to work. Like there need. There needs to be like a connection. It needs to be on a plant, right? Before the pod needs to grow somewhere, in order to do it. So how's it getting indoors? Yeah, that's the only confusing thing to me about like how the pod actually works because in certain cases it looks as if the tendrils are connecting to the person that they are snatching yeah. and in yeah. other cases they're n- not even close. Yeah. Um, everything else I think makes some kind of sense but that's the only bit that I'm not 100% sure about. Maybe there's like no real consistency with it so that we're made, you know, Confusion they're adaptable. of the body snatches. I don't know what. Very <laughs> confusing, <laughs> mate, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, as he, he sort of rescues Elizabeth, takes a, a body, um, he snatches the body, ironically enough, and he runs away with it, <laughs> like a, big, a weird goon. And then, um, so the, the husband finds out and then calls the police or something. And then when they go back, they've kind of hidden the clone, but they've kind of decorated the plant pots and stuff to look like a face. And they've kind of made it look like... <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of just seeing the plant pots? Oh, and come stuff? on. <laughs> Like, he did that really it's again. really impressive actually how quickly he managed to do that and it looks quite impressive but as a garden as like an an indoor garden it's sort of useless because it's quite a big room but the floor is so thick with plants and stuff like there's no way you can go into that room you can't enjoy it you just have to it's just a room that's just been <laughs> taken over by plants you just okay. gotta look into it and go looks, looks really lovely in there that's it. You know how like, you get like indoor I wish pools? I could go in. Is it like an indoor garden? Like you can just go in and sort of relax and <laughs> then leave. Or is it more like an like a aquarium? Like they've just put a thing of oh. grass, like a terrarium. That's what it's called. A big terrarium, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, uh, he saves Elizabeth, and then I think for the most of the rest of them, them running away. <laughs> oh no, there's a really there's a really good uh, <laughs> body horror uh, bit at Matthew's flat. Yeah, so yeah. they also like congreg- congregate um, at Matthew's flat, don't they? So Jack and Elizabeth, uh, no wait, who? Yeah, Jack, yeah. Elizabeth, Nancy, they all congregate at. at um... That's right. Isn't Matthew's, that right? Is that... yeah, yeah, at yeah. Matthew's, at Matthew's house, at yeah, yeah. Sutherland's house, yeah. And then yeah, they yeah. do sort of spend some time trying to convince uh, Leonard Nimoy that there are duplicates being made, which he 
refuses to believe. Nope, then they take handling. <laughs> I can't see any. Your eyes are closed. Nope. <laughs> that, they, they they take the flower to be examined, like at the health department at one point as well, didn't they? They didn't find any like records of it. Oh, it's like the um, and then Math- or something. Yeah. Matthew starts phoning people up, trying to alert various government agencies. He's like, "I've got a man on the inside. There's someone I know at the CIA. Don't worry about it. He'll sort it out." And calls up, and then they sort of know it's him before he even says. Yeah. It's like, always, always right. calling up. <laughs> 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 All right. All right, who's that? It's Matthew. It's Matthew. It's Matthew, isn't it? Just stop calling us, God. You're a health inspector. Get back to the rat turds. Bye. Get back to the rat turds. Yeah, I think that was a tagline for this film. Um, so <laughs> then uh, to the hiding out. Okay, so Matthew feels like quite sleepy. He's like, I'm gonna have a little nap in my in my garden. <laughs> Which on is on, on a roof. Yeah, it's got a Why roof. aren't there any gardens in normal places? Well, I've got a garden in the front room. I've got a garden in the bedroom upstairs. And I've got a garden on the roof. What's that in the back? Just a load of shit. <laughs> Just... This is maybe my favourite scene where he's having a little nap in the deck chair. And there's like five or six pods. There's a, uh, like a bunch of grapes. Like a bunch of pods. Uh, and then they sort of, it starts to... It kind of looks at him. <laughs> the plant, the flower thing. And then the flower head thing turns into like a man's head, uh, and then it kind of births him out. And it's weird. It's it's really quite effective. Um, it's, yeah. He kind of pushes yeah. himself out, uh, and then he's all the body. And it's not just his body. There's like a duplicate of the other people who aren't <laughs> anywhere near them. Yeah. yeah. This is the bit why it's confusing because he's obviously connected with a tendril to the nearest pod, but the others are all inside. And I think Nancy is still awake. She hasn't even gone to sleep. So yeah. that's a little bit confusing, but it is a such an effective scene. It's a lovely kind of icky, yeah. slimy, rubbery kind of version of Donald Sutherland being worthed <laughs> out. It's, it's really <laughs> did remind me of, of the thing, like the uh, the practical effects here were very yeah. you know yeah. gooey and horrible, and like this this sort of facial ex- expression, which I think is we get a lot in the thing, and we get a lot in this, which is like. <laughs> 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 like that sort of face. It's horrible. I don't like it. I think I was looking away at that point. Oh, I don't yeah. Like it. Um, yeah, but that was pretty gruesome. Um, so uh, before he gets completely conscious, goes through uh, the the crying girl um, wakes him up by crying really loud. She's like, ah! and he goes, "Oh, okay, what's up?" And then um, then they realise that uh, there's like a there's a fucking garden of they're everywhere. They're like fucking ants, people. Made of grass and stuff on the floor, um, so they yeah. start the call of the police maybe, um, and then the police know it's him, and then he starts to. He smashed the life out of the uh, the doubles first. He gets like a garden. Is it like a hoe or something? Yeah, it's hard. He just like basically <laughs> smashes the life out of his uh, Donald Sutherland double. Yeah. Um, cracks him like a fleshy Easter egg, <laughs> and just yeah. all the all the goo just comes out. Yeah. It's kind of, it's so it's, brutal it's, that scene. Yeah, it ha- it hasn't dated. I don't think as well. It's still just as cringeworthy. Yeah, as it probably was back in the day. It's rough. I think yeah. this is the first time where the hive mind is like in pain or something because it starts screaming. Is that, is oh, that yeah. when you first start to? It starts to do the pointing, <sighs> screamy thing. Ah, uh, you. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah. um, so at this point, we know that the whole city is pretty much after them, right? There's, they're running around. There's a lot of footsteps, cl- like clickety clackety everywhere, and uh, they sort of—I don't know how to get away from the flat. Actually, um, they like they 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 get away from the flat. They hide underneath this like a uh, staircase when the, all the pod people like run down past them. That's his technique. They to get hide away. under some stairs. You have either, like, yeah, a little eyes, little eyes poking <laughs> through that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate! But then, the, but as they're running away, uh, it's kind of gets to sort of a chaos point. Uh, there's um, the the little dog with the face of a homeless man who sings ban- <laughs> banjo music so, so there was so er- earlier on in the scene Matthew like sort of speaks to a guy who's in like the park playing banjo he's got a dog sat with him so we're kind of introduced that character very briefly but then later on well they're all trying to like blend in with the pop people all trying to be yeah, you know yeah. don't show any emotion as soon as that happens they're kind of walking along shuffling along Someone this dog just goes bounding up to them <laughs> <laughs> this dog with a human face like i mean you can tell it's like a practical effect where they've like stuck a latex mask or something on a dog but there's this perfect perfect moment where the dog like licks like this tongue comes through the mouth 
and like licks its nose. But then the, the bizarre thing is that the banjo music from earlier is it's like so a, is like playing as some weird <laughs> twisted soundtrack in the background. It's horrific. Yeah. I, as I said, I had to watch this moment about four or five times. So I was like, "What on earth is going on?" Because it's so it's just so unnerving. Because the dog kind of like bounds over, doesn't it? Kind of goes. Yeah. <laughs> And and then Elizabeth screams, which you know you would do in that moment. What would you yeah. do if you? If my dog ran up that? to me with cat's face, your face, <laughs> oh <laughs> cat's face, <laughs> a cat's face. <laughs> I'd scream. I'd scream. But if it was I'd singing scream. banjo lady music, I'd be like singing along to it. <laughs> and then one of the pod, one of the pod people, one of the pod people, like screams, and Donald Sutherland gives her a, a knuckle sucker. <laughs> yeah, that's a good noise. Um, pretty good. He, uh, he was waiting that whole film to. He's like, soon I'm gonna get to punch an old lady. I, I can't wait. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait. It's gonna be whoever it is. He's got a lot of pent up aggression though, because in the scene immediately before that, he kills Jeff Goldblum with a dart in the back of his head, and oh, yeah, at that yeah. point, um, he hasn't like he's really the idea of uh, people being duplicated and taking on like their friend's identity and actually living and walking around is still quite new. And he has no hesitation. As soon as he thinks that they're coming in, he grabs a dart and immediately stabs him in the, in the neck just, with it, essentially. He's very angry and vigilant about things pretending to be something that it's not like. It's just like with the caper and the rat's head. We, <laughs> yeah. we realised right away what, what his character was all about. This isn't yeah. a caper. And when he, when he sees the Jeff Goblin, he's like, this isn't a caper. This is a fucking rat's head. <laughs> He just it all what comes out. Weird, what a weird weapon to choose. Though, it? Dark. Yeah. Like, I I look. I feel like I look around. I keep looking around, you know, for more stuff rather than yeah. going. Yeah, dark. That do. A dark. Yeah. This tiny little drawing pin. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. He has been. He's been thinking about this for a long time. It's like that dart. I'm going to take down one of my coworkers or someone who comes in here with that. <laughs> he immediately goes for it. Yeah. And he doesn't say any puns. One hundred and eighty. Bullseye. <laughs> nothing. He just goes, ah! <laughs> <laughs> what, what an amateur. What an amateur, yeah. Uh, so, I think, yeah, so there's a lot of running away now. The, the, the four of them, the two couples, um, and then they split up. They get into a taxi. There's, I think the whole thing is, I mean, it's quite well done. I mean, it does go on. I felt a little bit, a little bit too long at, at this point. I kind of feel like I needed it to wrap up a bit quicker. But um, they, they run away to get in a taxi, and the taxi driver turns out to be uh, one of them. And then they find a factory where they're sort of mass producing. Oh, there's a weird bagpipes music bit. It's like yeah. <laughs> plays a um, is that Amazing Grace or something with bagpipes. Yeah. Um, I yeah. guess to signify uh, that it's like a global endeavor. <laughs> like it's uh, <laughs> Scottish and American. Like it's it's gone everywhere. Uh, they're pr- mass producing these olives. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a really weird moment. Is that some bagpipes? Yeah, it's got Scotland as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's gone over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, they love olives they take, over there. We're they take speed olives. at one point as well. Don't they need to try and stay awake. Yeah, because if they fall yeah. asleep, they will they will be got or something. Like when he, when they say they'll fall asleep, they'll be got. Do they mean if they fall asleep, they will crumble into dust, or do they mean they will just be caught? I think it's like that. That the, when they're asleep, it's easier for the. Well, it's, it's pretty much the only time that the pod people can replicate. That the pods can replicate you. So like you could be asleep, and it looks like there's no. It doesn't have to touch you, but it can kind of like I don't know where it needs to see you or just know you're there. Sniff you. But it can like stick it. It's all thematically sort of in there. Yeah. I mean, um, maybe uh, because it does get Elizabeth. And I think she just falls asleep, and then like she, like melts, like crumbles. Yeah, that's when he's enjoying the bagpipe music. He hears the bagpipes on the ships and goes to enjoy that. And by the time he comes back, it's pretty horrific. He says, he's asleep. like inspired, and he says, uh, "I love you." And then like they're hugging, and then it's pretty gross actually. I mean, her face kind of contorts inwards. So she's just like yeah. dreaming up something funny, <laughs> and then it sort of just goes all the way in. <laughs> Like yeah, a, it's grim. Yeah, it's yeah. really well done. And he, then he's even more angry now. He's even more angry. He's like the yeah. one person I loved is dead. I'm gonna dart some motherfuckers tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, I think he sort of goes kamikaze, doesn't he? Kamikaze on the uh, um, the factory. Yep. So he goes yeah. pretty much ape shit on the factory. Uh, burns it down. Uh, 
that pretty much all he does. Burns it down. Isn't it like Elizabeth's double, like wandering around naked as well? Yeah. yeah. At this yeah, point. Yeah. Um, I love his little delicate act work. Uh, that's how he burns the place down. And you'd he... think, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Can't you'd think right, that yeah. he would like have a big moment where he just swipes his axe, but he's just like <laughs> tapping it. He's tapping each yeah. little rope. It's lovely. I read that um, he all that stuff with him sort of flying around on the on the walkways. Uh, he didn't want any stunt double. And he didn't want. He just wanted it to be sort of real and authentic. And if he did the same thing and don't look now, you know, he's hanging off the. Oh yeah, that's the such thing. a that that scene is yeah. scary and don't look now. Yeah, I, I think I've I read didn't... that he was. We maybe talked about it on this. I think he was actually sort of hanging off for, for dear life. I think he's just he just likes to do that kind of thing. He's, oh uh, wow, he's a bit of a dad. I didn't what a, know that. What a guy. Um, but what happens at the end? He just he just says I'm tired now or something. He just goes to sleep or he just kind no, of accepts the future. He, ru- he runs um, away from the burning uh, pod factory pod central place yeah. and hides under the pier and there's a moment when like a cop or someone pops his head through a hole in the pier which he's underneath and he's sort of scanning around and then the the torch beam uh comes over uh goes right into right into camera right and okay. we go to white and then it, cu- it cuts to mm. the next day so i guess we're made to assume that he's you know he's gonna fall asleep eventually anyway there's so no way, no way of escaping this there's uh oh yeah but then well, but when it but when the next day it comes up, we we're made to believe it is just still Matthew as a human because he's very shifty and almost like trying to fit in with you know the pod people. So he's back working in the health department with all his duplicated employees. They're all sort of like walking in one direction, and he does look a bit shifty, doesn't he? He looks like oh, better fit in with these lot, have I? Oh yeah, like yeah. That. He plays this so well because you can read it both ways. Like when you know what the ending is, it's it's a great performance. This actually, yeah. Well, so it's your one of your your favorite horror ending to a film, right? It's yeah, it's got to be because uh, then he 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 walks out with all the pod people. Then I think you were about to say, and then outside is Nancy, and uh, she spots him from across uh, this sort of courtyard. Thinks that so he is still. Out his name. Yeah, and runs across, and then there's just that moment when he, you don't know exactly what's going to happen, and then he raises his hand, points at her, and lets out the shriek. Yeah, and, and then, then we almost zoom right into like his nostril, almost, but then it changes at the last uh, minute and it goes again, into his mouth. He he knows that it's not a caper, like <laughs> yeah. it just ends on that. So they they stick with that all the way through. He is the sort of the the how did the food investigator? How did how did Nancy stay human? then well she obviously just didn't sleep i guess yeah she's absolutely she, her bags under her eyes are bloody massive she's <laughs> oh, i'd sleep for the ages matthew help me <laughs> yeah so there we go i mean it's a pretty horrible ending because i think at one point as well we see like children getting like led off for what essentially yeah. looks like to be duplicated but um, they do they don't make it sound like it's that bad like they make it sound like <laughs> you'll still have your consciousness. Like you just won't, like have it. It won't be yeah, as but... fun. It'd be like everything would just be nice, that? even mid, even cute. Well, yeah, it might but... might be, but it is so like you get to explore space. And you're like, what? You didn't say that before. <laughs> are they just saying space. that though? Because are we made to think that you actually will have your consciousness, or have they just duplicated your consciousness? So you essentially well, you I are dead. It's... But yeah, but I don't know. I mean, I guess that's kind of. Left up to You'd us, go yeah. for this, wouldn't you? Luke, Luke's sold. Luke's like, if this was an option, I'll probably just, I'll probably just. Leonard be Nimoy says you'll get to uh, sail to the winds of Jupiter <laughs> or something. I don't know. He says something like, uh, I mean, that'd be Mars. that'd be all right. And that'd you... be all right. But at yeah. the end, it'd be like going on holiday. You know, when you go on holiday for ages, and then you think, I just want to come home and just chill out and watch Netflix and eat Ben and Jerry's. It'll be like that, but you'll be in Jupiter. And there's no way to get home. But I think it yeah. means through the mind, right? So like you wouldn't, get, you just experience it through other parts of so the there's collective. No, consciousness. There's no, no no travel involved. I think so. I don't know. I mean, you, 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 right. I haven't done it. Right, Luke. I haven't done it yet. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah. you'd never you'd never be able to eat olives again, though. That would be like eating your own. Yeah. So yeah. well, I don't, I'm not, big... not a big fan of olives. So I'm oh, not a okay. of well, you're fine okay, then. You're right. Yeah. You'd be fine. This this is a perfect world for you. In yeah. the invasion of the body snatchers world. Yeah. Um, okay, so oh yeah, and then it ends. There's also no credits music. Interesting enough. 
Uh, Pure silence. Yes. Yeah. What does so, that represent? Does that represent the sheer void, the empty void. What the planet? What planet Earth has become? Maybe. Yeah. Like there's no, there's no fun anymore. It's no, it's not any fun anymore. Uh, I've got some trivia. If you guys are ready for it, let's yes. have it. Okay. <laughs> Number one. Donald Sutherland was hit by a Volkswagen Beetle while filming a shot of Matthew and Elizabeth running. He fell onto the windshield and was able to see the driver saying what? So he got hit by a car and he saw the driver and the driver looked at him and he said something. What did he say? Donald Sutherland? <laughs> Question mark. Exclamation mark. Yeah, that was going to go somewhere down that line as well. Well, he actually said, Oh my God, not you! Because he was aiming for someone else, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was aiming for that other gangly scarecrow man with tightly knit curls. <laughs> Number two. Uh, Harry, the homeless banjo guy's banjo playing, was performed by the front man of what band? Oh. Um, I would have never got this. It's too the, hard. The, the Yardbirds. Oh, I mean. Which was six, that was 60s. Uh, what was the oh what was the banjo player called was it jerry something no i don't know i don't know was it um oh i was about to say what's his name but he plays the flute doesn't he who am i thinking of flute man pavarotti i don't know um well okay go on if you got if you got one in you last one is it the band the band, yes. I don't know. Uh, uh, no, it's both, both all good answers, really. Um, it actually is a guy called Jerry Garcia, the front man <sighs> of the Grateful Dead. You, you pretty much got it, John. Uh, oh, Grateful Dead. Yeah, I've never really listened to Grateful Dead, though. Um, uh, maybe they're good. Uh, okay, number three. Uh, Donald Sutherland was paid something between two hundred thousand and three hundred thousand uh, dollars to be in this film. How much did Brooke Adams get? Oh, oh God! This is going to be a controversial topic, isn't it? Yeah, this is going to be. Really I'm going to go for if he got paid. If he got paid 200k, I'm going to say she got paid 20k. Oh man, I'm going to say <laughs> it's unfortunate because I think that Brooke Adams is incredible in this, and I can't believe she wasn't in more stuff afterwards. She was in a few things, but she's an amazing performance. But it was probably like half what. Donald okay. Sutherland is. Uh, maybe well, I'm being too optimistic. So here's the thing. So she got paid the same amount as Jeff Goldblum and Leonard Nimoy. I don't know if that changes your answers. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, maybe a bit more then. 50k? So we go with, okay, John? I'll stick with 100. She deserves 100. She deserves as much as Donald Sutherland, but let's say 100. They all got paid $25,000. Oh! That's close. First, first guess was good. And I was trying to... Yeah. yeah. Should have stopped with my instincts. Uh, number four Donald Siegel the director of the original Body Snatchers movie from the 50s appeared in this film as what I actually, the, the I actually know was this the, was he the taxi driver yeah he was the taxi driver yeah oh. yeah. well done uh, John you knew that I'm guessing from your uh, your studies in this film uh, yeah, I don't know how I know that detail. I know another detail as well, but I'm going to save it just in case it's the next question. I don't okay. know if there's uh, more. Uh, okay, so number five. Last, last question. Who would win in a race between Brooke Adams and Donald Sutherland? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brooke Donald Adams. Sutherland has got like, the longest legs yeah. that I've ever seen on a on a human man. <laughs> so no disrespect to, no, Brooke no Adams. Disrespect to Brooke Adams, but, but Donald Sutherland can get down the street in three strides. Okay. Uh, Brooke Adams was running in those high heels, though, so I'm going to say that she 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 could get it. Okay. She was keeping up with him. So here, here, here's what it said. Uh, Brooke Adams challenged Donald Sutherland to a foot race during one of the film's many chase scenes. After Philip Kaufman yelled cut, they just kept going, and Adams won in a dress and high heels, no less. Yeah, I noticed that. Because oh. I'm, I'm, I was thinking, like, the amount of well, times man. when I've been out with uh, people and the girls, like, can't move because they're on these high heels. But there's a scene in this where she's, like, sprinting. Like incredibly fast uh, <clears throat> in her heels. It's over like grass as well. And then she steps on something like the next scene and, go, and it like it twists her ankle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I think you both got all those right. Well done. Um, so we need to rate the films now. Uh, John, did you want to go first? Well, mine's going to be quite high. I think it's going to... This is really a, a classic yeah. that I that I uh, love. Uh, 
it's um i love the fact that it goes through like a bunch of different types of horror it starts like really intimately and it's like the question of whether or not the, her partner is who she thinks he is and then it gets like wider and wider it becomes like alien an alien invasion it becomes like a sighty wide conspiracy horror it's a zombie movie in places yeah. they can get you while you sleep like there's so many bits of it that i think um other movies would just cherry pick that one element and it would be the whole running time would just be that one horrific element and this has got like a lot going on um yeah it's I, i'm not gonna go crazy and give it like an a plus it's a, but it's a solid a for me i love it i think it's a classic i know that's going to be high compared to um maybe or maybe what you guys think um it has dated a little bit but i've got that nostalgic uh love for it that extra um, quality. yeah yeah so i'm quite biased but yeah cool. a what about you ben uh <clears throat> yeah i'm inclined to agree i think it's um definitely up there i think the way it's obviously influenced other horror films as well, even though it is a remake, of course. Saw a lot of the thing in it. Um, also, things like Nightmare on Elm Street, where you know you don't go to sleep because you'll be got. I mean, that's that's not too common in 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 horror films. So this is probably the only other time I've seen it. <clears throat> uh, so I guess it influenced that in some way. Uh, some really great performances. Some genuinely horrific moments. Probably one of one of the most iconic final shots in horror slash sci-fi ever um I probably do, this film probably doesn't get as much love as it should in terms of you know being being one one of the one of those classics um so i'd probably go a little bit less than john um so i might go for an a minus on this one yeah i think um i agree with with ben uh, i'm gonna be a minus as well i feel like it's um I mean, you can't really complain about any of this film. It's just everything about it is, is like pretty, pretty spot and classic. I mean, the only thing I would say is like I think um, I feel like there's a little bit too much running and chasing. I feel like I could have just done <laughs> a little, little bit less of that. So I felt like it just needed a bit to move towards the end a bit quicker. But yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, um, I'll never. I mean, that pointing and screaming thing has been used in various ways throughout the years. Um, and it feels like this film's influenced a lot of films in other ways, and the whole f- idea of the pods recreating you is 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 pretty pretty creepy. Um, I'd like to rewatch the um, the '90s version again, just to because that really did get to me as a kid. So I'd like to see if that still holds up. It, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But um, yeah, cool. All right. So um, John, you do horror stuff as well as talk about horror movies on this podcast just now. Um, yeah. What? Where can we send people to to check out more of your stuff, see pictures uh, of you, and that kind of? Thing? Uh, they can go to uh, johncrinnan dot com, or I'm on Twitter and Instagram at John Crinnan, which is J O H N C R I N A N. Cool. Uh, and Ben is at Ben Errington. Is it underscore? At Errington? Ben, <coughs> sorry, at Ben underscore Errington. Cool. Come on, Luke. <laughs> I'm at Luke of Condor, and that's Condor's, but it'll be K. So, uh, this show is brought to you by Hawk and Cleaver. Head over to hawkandcleaver.com. Become a patron of patreon.com forward slash Hawk and Cleaver. Thanks to Kovach Camera for our theme music. Thanks to ACAST for hosting the show. Thanks to the guys on the Facebook group. Thank you very much for joining in our little conversations and, and whatnot. Um, and thanks to the listeners. If you enjoyed the show, please consider giving us a rating review in iTunes. I was going to say, um, you, both of you guys have worked on a horror podcast recently, horror fiction podcast uh, called The Nest. The serialized horror audio drama that's going to be available on the. If you go to your podcast feed and search for the other stories, um, and then it should come up. I think it starts <coughs> next Monday. I think is that right? Uh, uh, next Sunday. Sun- so Sunday. So Sunday, the twenty seventh, running all the way through to Halloween. Five episodes, uh, serialized fiction horror, uh, presented by the other stories. Should be fun. Looking forward to it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Thanks to uh, thanks to John again. Thanks to Makoto Ben for being a writer, dude. And uh, yeah, cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, John. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Bye. Bye.